The lesson today will help you to deal with letters asking for and giving advice. First of all, I'd like to introduce the main point of this lesson. We're going to study the future of letters asking for and giving advice. Then, we should look at the simple task and answer. And how about the simple task and answer will give you an overview and a general idea and also experience to help you write the letter well. It's also very important for us to study the background plan for letters of advice. The most important part is the useful impression and structure for asking and giving advice. During the lesson, I'm going to give you some guidelines and instructions so that you can do your practice and assignment well. Now, please study some future of letters asking for or giving advice. The purpose of this help letter is to respond to a request or inquiry about advice. The main point you should write is to ask or to give advice or suggestion. And also, please explain why the advice is needed in terms of text organization. We should discuss each point in a separate paragraph and now I'd like to review the principle for developing a paragraph in English. That is, we should begin with a clear topic sentence and then we uh, support the topic sentence with example and justification. You should also pay much attention to the writing style. Depend on the particular situation that you need to decide whether it should be written in formal style or in informal style. If you make it wrong, you may have some problem because the effectiveness of your letter will be very low. So please make sure you can choose the appropriate writing style. And now, please look at the sample thoughts. I'm going to read aloud this sample task and highlight some important terms or new words. The student representative body at the university or college which you attend offers an advisory service to help students with their problems. As a member of the advisory committee, you have received a letter from a foreign student who is concerned about various problems related to studying abroad. Write a letter offering practical advice and reassure them that they do not need to worry. Please look at some words. First, pay attention to the word body. The word body has several meanings. In this case, it doesn't mean our physical body, no. The word body means association, organization. That means this university or college has an organization to have students, to represent students. So remember the word body here doesn't mean human body. Okay. Look at the situation of this letter and the content. So you're going to write the advice to have the student clear their concerns about the problems related to studying abroad. Think of the key word for the topic. So you should focus on these points. As for recognizing the letter type, please pay attention to this instruction, offering practical advice and reassure them. So this phrase 
indicate that your writing should be giving advice, not asking for advice. Therefore, you should develop your ability to understand the writing thoughts and choose the focus of the writing, the content you are going to, uh, to write, and also to decide the writing style of your letter. I have just showed you the sample letter. So pay attention to some important parts of this letter. According to the writing task, you should write the letter in formal style. Therefore, you should write dear, must, checklist. This one indicates the formal greeting. The next body paragraph should function as the introduction, where you give a brief introduction of yourself that you're working for student advisory service. In the letter giving advice, you should express your understanding of the other's problem. Here you can say that, I understand that you are nervous about blah, blah, blah. And it shows that you can share the sympathy. You have the sympathy and you understand their problem. That you make your advice more convincing. But is it very important for you to write clearly? I hope the following advice will be of some help. It says then, show the tie of your letter and the reason that you are writing this letter. So we have just look at the greeting and the first body paragraph of the letter. Next, you can see. This paragraph, let's say uh, paragraph two. In paragraph two, you address the first problem and you give here, I wish that you meet many people. You want to give the advice about social life, attending the social life and social relationship for new students when they first study at university. If you look at paragraph three, this paragraph explains why your recipient should follow your advice. Paragraph four, give other advice related to, to uh, the concern or to the topics. And you can see this one also uh, is short. Paragraph five, but the function of this paragraph is to give the reason why the previous advice is valuable. Nearly to the end of this letter, let's say this is paragraph six, you uh, spread the closing remark for the letter. And this one, be careful. This is the final closing remark before you sign your name with your full name. So altogether, in terms of text organization, this letter contains six paragraphs. However, it depends on the situation. So sometimes you may need four or five paragraphs. When you're writing the letter, it's also very useful for you to use the typical impression to say your idea or your point. And now let's look at the very important skill that is to use the typical impression to indicate your advice. And here we should learn. I will suggest that, blah, blah, blah. One of the very clear and very useful impression that you should learn now. Inside the word suggest, you can also use, I would recommend. And remember after recommend or suggest with you verb in your channel. Or we can use the verb advice directly. 
So you can say, I would advise you to do something. But somebody to do something. Another very useful impression that I myself, I love this one. That's it, the best course of action would be, would be to blah, blah, blah. But remember that this one is quite formal. But it's suitable for this letter because this letter is very formal. In order to indicate that your advice is this one is important, so you can use strongly. So you can learn the expression, I strongly recommend that. To achieve the coherence and linking between the idea in your letter. You should use effective and suitable transition signals such as firstly, also, they will also to indicate another advice or another point. You can also use additionally or most important of all. These words and phrases should be used at the transition signal in your letter. So you should also remember to use a transition signal and conjunction to connect and, and link the idea in your letter. All together, this feature make a good letter and you will get very high mark and your letter will sound very effective. Moving to the paragraph lens of letters of advice. In paragraph one, we should say the purpose or the reason for writing the letter. And as for letters of advice, we should express our understanding of the problem. In the main body paragraph, depending on the needs of the recipient, we can offer the advice or suggestion. Or if they, if you want the other to give you the advice, you may need to express your request for advice. You can also provide further information or explanation in another paragraph. And the final paragraph should be devoted to the closing remark. And remember to say your name. You should know that whether we use four, five or six paragraphs, it depends on the specific instruction for the letter writing task. So in your examination, please read the writing task carefully so that you can design and make a suitable paragraph plan for your letter. As I have told you before, it's extremely important to learn several useful language for letter. To begin letter asking for advice, we can use, I'm writing to ask if you could help me with, or I'm writing to ask you for your advice about. You can also use, would you mind giving me a piece of advice about, or I have problem and I need your advice. Let's look at this sample. I'm writing to ask if you could help me with advice about how New Zealand can find accommodation and access facility at your university. So besides the concise, it should be concise job, not lengthy. You indicate that you need the advice and you also indicate what aspect, what piece of information that you need them to get the advice. So you can say, this is your first need. You need advice about accommodation and you need advice to access the facility at the university. So please stay 
the main point, the main aspect that you need. As for grammar, okay, sometimes grammar is very important. For grammars, you should be very careful with the word advice. Remember that advice is uncountable nouns. So you should not write unadvised. I'm writing directly on the screen, so it may not look good. So we say uh, unadvised. This is a big mistake. All right, so from now on, never write unadvised. And also, never write in plural. For example, you should not write advice this way. Advice C. Oh, this is also a terrible mistake. Because, as I have a just mentioned, advice is uncountable, so it should have no plural, no S. So remember this one in using English correctly. If you want to count, I want to, so you can say piece of advice. So now you should learn how to use the phrase piece up, so you can say a piece of advice, or two pieces of advice, three pieces of advice, but you should not write three advice C. Okay, so remember this one. And this is regarded as one of the common mistakes that many students of English usually make. So avoid this mistake. So please take note so that from now on, whenever you, you use the word advice, you can do it correctly. As for letter giving advice, you can stop the letter. I'm writing in reply to your letter requesting advice about blah, blah, blah. Or you can use, I'm writing in response to your letter. To be polite, you can use, thank you for your letter requesting advice about. Or you make sure to write, I hope the following advice or suggestion will be of some help to you. This example will illustrate how to use the beginning impression. I'm writing on behalf of the Student Advisory Service in reply to your letters of May the 15th. I understand that you are nervous about moving to a foreign country and the following advice will be of some help to you. Okay, you can, you can see. It's very clear for beginning a suitable letter. If you need to ask for advice, you can use, I would appreciate it if you could give me some advice about, or could you possibly offer your advice? But remember, if you want to do the second impression here, before that, you should destroy your problem. For example, you can say, I have a problem with blah, 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 blah. Then you destroy it. Could you possibly offer your advice? Okay. And uh, the third expression that you can use is, I'm writing to request some advice concerning. Or, it could, I would be grateful if you could offer your advice. So please, Take note and learn by heart as many impressions as possible so that you can write properly and very quickly. Without the impression, you have to think that to translate and it takes time and sometimes you can get wrong. So there are five impressions I would introduce to you now. For the last one, I wonder if you could help me with blah, blah, blah. To give advice, normally, 
we tend to write a letter giving advice. So you can write, I would suggest, I would recommend, and after that you can use verb in, or if you don't use verb in, you can use that with another clause. You can also add some adverb to emphasize the importance of your advice. So you can say, I would strongly, blah, blah, blah. Or you can use the normal one. It's very popular and familiar to many learners of English. You can say, you should, you ought to. This one sound neutral. And you can use in both formal or informal letter. Or you can write, it might be useful if you were to, or it might be to your advantage if you were to to do something, for example. You can say, I feel or I believe that the best course of action would be to blah, 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 blah. Or I would like to offer one or two suggestions concerning. Now look at the example. I would suggest that you try to meet as many people and classmates as possible during the first few days at university. As this is when many friendships are formed. Please also note that in the example, we can see the word as, as me, because. And you can also replace it with because. So you can give the reason why that supply is necessary. In a letter, you may give two, three, or more pieces of advice. Uh, not only one piece of advice. So you should use some word like I also to indicate another piece of advice. Or you can use in addition, additionally, furthermore. Remember spelling for furthermore with an R. Many of you should write food the more. It is silly mistake. So write correctly in terms of spelling. And you can say uh, use more importantly. Look at the two examples. I would also recommend joining some clubs and societies as a way of meeting people with the same interests as yours. Additionally, if you find that you need help, the best course of action would be to speak to your tutor. Okay, so if you can use a proper transition signal, your letter, and in general, your writing would be very clear and sound coherent to make your writing coherent now we're going to move to the ending of the letter for the letter asking for advice you can say i look forward to receiving your advice and remember after look forward to we should you verb in and don't make mistake with this kind of structure or you can say, I would be, it could be of great help if you could advise me. Or, I would really appreciate your assistance in this matter. I would appreciate if you could give me your advice as soon as possible. As a professional student of English, my advice to you is that you should learn by heart many of these questions so that you can apply to your letter. Well, uh, oh, sorry, uh, I nearly forget to highlight another feature in using the word advice. If you look at these two words, so please use your pen 
to highlight these two ways. The first one we say advice is a noun. So for now, we write in spelling C E and we pronounce advice. Right? The final sound is but for verb, make sure you write correctly with S E. So this one we say advice. Okay, so remember, it's quite complicated. We write correctly in spelling for noun and for verb. And also, when you say it, pay attention to the final sound. Okay, now, let's move to letter giving advice. You can end this letter by saying, I hope that these suggestions will prove to be of some assistance or will be of or will have been useful. You can say, I trust that you will accept this advice or you follow this advice. I would be pleased I, or I would be happy to offer any additional advice you may require. Or please do not hesitate to contact me should you have any further question or further queries or further problems. This example may give you some idea of how to end the letter give me advice. I would like to wish you good luck with your course. Please do not hesitate to contact me again should you have any further question. Oh, and now I would like to review some collocation with advice. So here you can learn giving advice, asking for advice. We can use to accept advice, to follow advice, to offer advice. They are the very basic and very useful collocation. That means we're going together. So when you deal with advice, and you should be careful to use correctly the verb. Right? So the verb usually go with advice. Now, you should be more confident and you have enough skills to write a letter asking for and giving advice. Now, you can practice with writing assignment one. First of all, the instruction. You should spend about 20 minutes on this task and the main task. You are a town council official. You have received many letters from the residents asking for advice about ways to prevent burglary. Write a letter to offer some practical advice on how to protect your home against burglars. And remember the land. You should write between 118, 80, and 250 words. Okay, so please remember to submit your practice with this writing assignment. If you need to do further practice, you can look at writing exercise two. You work as an advisor. Right here, we can write advisor. You are required to be advice to people who would like to move to a new place. Write a letter to offer specific advice on way to cope with social and practical challenges that migrants uh, that migrants might experience when they move to a strange place. You should write between one hundred and eighty words and two hundred and fifty words. These two writing assignments are at C1 level.
of English. So you can use these seven to do your practice. Thank you for attending my lecture and hope you enjoy the lesson. Did you have any question? Okay, why are you thinking of the question? We should move on to the second part. Now, welcome to my guideline to help you deal with the practice with writing letter. And today we are going to do practice with letters of advice. Please open your material and look at the exercise in your textbook. Okay, now, look at exercise one. And the exercise 1A and 1B. We deal with exercise 1A first. Nguyễn Quỳnh Anh, please. Please read aloud the instruction and the question. Yes. Read the following question, then tell, then listen to dialogue and answer them. You may take notes while listening. A. Who did Bart send the letter to? B. Is the letter formal or informal? C. What is the reason for writing? D. What problems does he describe in the letter? E. How does Bart start and finish the letter? B. Read the following questions, then listen to the second letter and answer them. A. What is the reason for writing? B. What advice is given? C. How does the letter start and end? Uh, D. Is, the, is this an informal, formal, or semi-formal letter? Oh, excellent. I am very pleased that today you perform your English very well. That is a good way for you. Okay, so keep going. Something like this. Now back to... Exercise 1A. I will help you with the first question. So you just accept the audio, audio and listen to the tape so that you can answer this question. The exercise also help you to develop your listening skill, but it's focused on the language for writing the letter. So it have you a lot with your language skill. Now back to question A. Who did Pat send a letter to? From the listening, you can answer. Letter is sent to Auntie Barbara and Anthony Aunt. Okay, so just the short answer and you can take notes. So you have a uh, four more questions to answer. So prepare to answer in a few minutes. As for exercise 1B, the reason for this letter is to give advice. So you can answer question A. How about question B, C or D? Well, then have just have us to hear the question and now you can see my highlight. Now we're going to um, invite another one to help us look at exercise two. Okay, look at exercise two now. I'm showing you the picture for the two plan asking for advice and giving the advice. So pay attention to the question here. Which, which plan will follow in each letter? So here you can say plan one. So uh, let me be how to answer this. Plan one, this, this one, asking, this asking for advice, very clear. But you should refer to the letter in exercise one to decide whether the uh, plan is you for pet letter or papara letter. So answer this. Okay, and do the same for 
lentil. Lentil is a, uh, in this one. So you should also say whether this plan is used for whose letter. I will just give you the way for you to prepare the answer for this exercise. So prepare now. Exercise three is very helpful. This one is so useful. However, it's very complicated. Now I would like one of you to look at the instruction for this task and say aloud. No need for you to read the whole letter. Leave and learn, please. Yeah. <laughs> Exercise 3. Read the following letter and answer this question. What kind of letter are they? Which letter informal or which informal? What is the topic of each paragraph in each letter? Now replay the underlying phrases with other similar expressions, keeping the other style. Thank you. That's enough. Okay. Today, you uh, uh, also is, uh, had some noise, but I think that your English is okay now. There are many questions. Question one, five letter. Question two, about writing style, formal, informal. Question three, oh, we understand the topic for each paragraph. So question three means that when you write paragraph, each paragraph should be about a topic. Okay, so we learned it. Requirement four, replace the underlying phrases with other similar impressions. Okay, so remember, this exercise contains four questions. I'm going to help you to answer um, question four. Instead of saying, thank you for your letter asking for my advice, you can say, many thanks for your letter requesting my advice, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and how about the other one? If I were you, I would, so you can replace with another suitable one. Or, uh, I would also suggest that, yeah, it could be a good idea, or uh, I hope the suggestion will be up somehow, right? In order to answer question one, kind of letter, writing style, formal or informal, number two, harder to answer question three about the topic of each question. Sorry, the topic of each paragraph. So I give you the preparation. You can answer something like this. Model A is a formal letter giving advice. Paragraph one. The topic is to thanks, express the thanks for the letter and understanding. How about the topic of paragraph two and three? You should be there to answer. And give me your answer in a few minutes. Okay, now let's move on to letter two, model B. This is also how you prepare to answer. So model B is, so you answer this question. What kind of letter is this? Yeah. This one has been done for, for you. How about the other one? The other one. And here it contains many more, right? Paragraph four. Okay, so this is the way for you to check notes, answer. And with the exercise, you should also prepare to rewrite the underlying facing. I'm going to show you how to do this one. Take the letter, informal letter, so you can say, I just got the letter and I think I can give you some advice. Okay, so this one can replace thanks for your letter asking me for advice. How about the best advice I can give you? What other way you should express this idea? And this, and this, and this. 
Okay, so remember to rewrite. We have uh, two more exercises. Exercise. Now, exercise four. Can I invite Lady Kuntang? Exercise four. Study the following. Study the following questions and using appropriate expressions. Offer advice to a person. One, your friend wants some advice on what her should take with her on her first trip abroad. Two, your boyfriend, girlfriend has asked you for advice on how to impress your parents the first system. It's quite good. How you should remember to friends the word appropriate, which is it, not age, but appropriate. And uh, please also uh, perform the final sound once. And uh, parents, it's etc. Okay, so to perfect your pronunciation, pay much attention to the final sound. Now back to the guideline. We have you do the exercise. Look at situation one or task one. You can see this one is to the advice on what to take for the first trip abroad. So you can think of this topic. So bring something abroad. So you can give some suggestions such as buy traveler check. It means to bring the check, not taking cash. Maybe. Or you can say, um, make sure someone know where you're planning to be so that to get in, in touch. All right. So the one is about keeping the contact with your relative, all right? So you can think of two advice, two pieces of advice. Situation two. So please try to think of the idea for advice and at least two or three points. And you should also prepare space for you to answer. Exercise four or three, four and five, prepare the same. And I think that you should prepare and take note in advance in your note notebook so that when uh, you uh, get the answer, you can quickly update and note down the answer. And the last exercise, exercise five. Can I invite uh, Cao Anh Ngam, please. Yes, I'm here. And write the following letters in the appropriate style using uh, 120 to 180 words. One, your parents will not let you go on holiday as they want you to, to study your, for your exams. Write a letter to a friend Atkins for his her advice on this matter. Oh, just enough. All right. So, yes. I'll ask you uh, to give you some idea of how to do this. So, you should prepare the paragraph plan. I think the layout of what you need to prepare. So, you should say paragraph one, uh, read, and you say this one to ask the advice. This one is very important because if you do not decide it correctly, you can write the wrong content. And this write up problem. So what problem you should describe? So please think up in detail. Two or three points for description. And what you write in the final paragraph. So also prepare. Task two and task three. Task two, you should respond to uh, this problem. Fail or a level exam coming into university. Never get a degree now. This one you can prepare some ideas, such as paragraph one, you should express your sympathy with his or her problem. And then what you write in the other paragraph. And also the, the format for you to prepare answering task three. So please take note into your notebook. 
We are learning writing, so we do a lot of writing and writing, etc. Okay, update your answer and uh, please give me your answer to exercise one to find your material. You're going to have uh, 15 minutes break. So I write here the number 15 minute breaks plus five minutes for you to update the answer because you are supposed to prepare in advance during the week not now and now just based on the guideline to update your answer altogether we have uh, 20 minutes it means we're going to be back and give me the answer in 20 minutes